<laughs> so guess what i was thinking about something else today i thought i should share with you okay this year we've said that we're going to look to jesus only we're going to follow him closely we're going to keep our eyes on him and i was reading something from matthew 16 and an idea or let me just say i had this feeling in my heart or deep down in my spirit i was getting some kind of revelation from matthew 16 that will help us in this year as we decide to focus on jesus only in the sea okay so while you're focusing on jesus a couple of things would happen including this that i'm about to share with you so matthew 16 from verse i think i was reading from verse um from verse 21 okay so that was when jesus was sharing with his disciples about the, the fact that he is going to suffer in the hands of of the people and he's going to die and i'm just going to go straight to read it for you so matthew 16 from verse 21 so from that time on Jesus began to explain to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hands of the elders, the chief priests and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and on the third day be raised to life. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Never, Lord, he said, this shall never happen to you. What did Jesus say? Jesus turned and said to Peter, get behind me satan you are a stumbling block to me you do not have in mind the concerns of god but merely human consents that's intrigued me jesus had the concerns of god jesus was focusing on what his father does was focusing on solely on his purpose only on what he has been called to come and do and he was just revealing to the disciples listen this is what is going to happen to me and Peter did not have any ill intentions. Peter's intention was very genuine. Peter calling Jesus aside and trying to rebuke him, do not say that, was befitting for a society. It was normal for a person to take you aside and tell you, do not tell me he's going to kill you. Do not tell me that you're going to suffer in the hands of many people and you're going to die. It's like proclaiming evil upon yourself. Do not tell me that. Peter did right. In the eyes of society, in the eyes of the normalities of human world, Peter did right. But what did Jesus do? Jesus said, get behind me, you Satan. For you do not have the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. Listen, when you decide to look to Jesus, then your concerns become concerns of God. There are decisions that you will take. You will take some drastic measures. You will stop doing certain things. And some humans, family, friends, loved ones who have genuine consents for you will come to you and try to tell you or talk you out of your drastic decisions of wanting to keep a gaze on Jesus and wanting to put, pick up your cross and follow him and wanting to do everything just to follow Jesus in this year. It's only you that get what, what is in your heart. Only you know what God is telling you. Only you know the dreams you've seen. Only you know... How you feel that God is pulling you to do something for him in a certain area. Jesus is not normal. So those of us who follow Jesus are abnormal. In the minds of humans, some of your actions will look abnormal. And humans will try to talk, to you, out, talk you out of it. They will try to say that, listen... This and this and this is the reason you shouldn't do this. From my experience, you shouldn't do this. From what I've seen in the past, you shouldn't do this. From this, you shouldn't do this. From this, you shouldn't do that. But is that what God is telling you? Is that a godly concern? Is that what you hear the Lord telling you in this year? For example, you want to take a holiday five days just to be in your room and fast. Friends will tell you, what are you talking about? You are following Jesus. You know Jesus fast, so you want to fast and pray. You want to keep away from people a bit so that you can, you can focus. Some people will be offended. Some will say, what are you talking about? I mean, you can step out and have some fun and come back and just still pray or spend some time with God. There will be a lot of reason. You can take a bulk amount of money that I'm going to give it to. to I'm going to donate this to this place or I'm going to put this to the kingdom of God to use this for this. And people will think you're crazy. Why will you do that? And they will try to talk you out of it using financial knowledge. In so many ways. But if you're keeping a gaze on Jesus, if, you, if your eyes are fixed on Jesus, 
you cannot afford to hear human consent. You can hear God consents only. So when you have people coming to you with genuine intentions for you, they do not mean ill. They are not, we're not saying that they are Satan's. No, they mean well. They mean well. But then it's up to you to go to Jesus and say, this is my decision. This is my choice. Is this what you want for me? Open my eyes to what you see. Open my ears to what you hear. Open my spirit to you entirely that I may be sure that this is what you require of me. And I follow. Seeing what you do, I only follow and do what you do. And do not be shifted away or do not be derailed by human concerns. This year, we're fixing our eyes on Jesus only. There are a couple of policies that will bring human concerns. The financial crisis that will bring human concerns. There are some illnesses that will bring human concerns. There are a whole lot of things that will happen that will bring human concerns. But as you're fixing your eyes on Jesus, when those human concerns come, look for God's concern in the midst of all that. What is God singing about this? What is God's concern regarding the situation? What is God's concern regarding me going here or going there? What is God's concern regarding me doing this or doing that? What is God's concern? Are you following merely human concerns or God's concerns? You can find out in prayer. You can find out in studying your word. You can find out in keeping close relationship with Jesus. You can find out in intending that my eyes are on you, Jesus. My eyes are on only you. I intend to deny myself, to deny myself of all the human consents and follow God's consents and be in line with what you are doing in, the, in this season. For who knows? You may be here at this point in time for a time as this, for a particular purpose that only you can see. Only you can see. Nobody else can see. Only you. So you keep a focus on Jesus and keep moving. Stretch forth your hand and continue to move towards him closer and closer in this year. You may not know the difference that is taking place, but I tell you at the end of the year, you will see some difference in your life. You will see how closer you have become with God. See that indeed, you are satisfied deep inside. God bless you. I love you.